Hello, everyone. We're going to get started here. Uh, my name is Peter Kang. I'm a demo engineer here at Salesforce. This is Matt Atkins. He's a senior UX designer. Today in the session, we'll be talking about extracting text from images using a computer vision API. So before going forward, there's our forward-looking statement. Um, just a quick note that con when considering future developments, whether by us or with any other solution provider, you should always base your purchasing decisions on what is currently available. So today we'll be covering a demo of business card to lead, uh, Salesforce One quick action that we've created with OCR. We'll talk a little bit about optical character recognition uh, as a whole, and we'll talk about the process for including an OCR API into a Visual Force page, and then a quick note looking ahead to Einstein. And right. here's Matt to tell you a little story. All right, so here we've got Diana Hawkins. She's a CMO at a small marketing agency in Los Angeles, and she's a customer just like you, and she's attending Dreamforce. And here in the foreground, we've got Nolan Harlow. So Nolan here, is running an architecture firm in the Los Angeles area as well. And his business is struggling right now. And he overhears Diana talking about how she's helped a couple small businesses grow. So he goes over and introduces himself. So Diana and Harlow are talking, and they're discussing some high-level strategies, and they're really getting into it. But no one's got to go to another session. So he runs off hands Diana his business card, and Diana pulls up the Salesforce One app. She opens Vision, and she scans his business card. Now, what this is going to do is going to pull all of his information into Salesforce and create a lead. After that lead's created, it'll send him an email, and Nolan gets this email while he's in a session. He checks the email, and sure enough, there's Diana Hawkins' message. So a few weeks later, after Dreamforce, after they recoup, they go over some strategies, and Diana's got a new client, and Nolan's business is as great as ever. So let's take a look at how it would be in real life. So I'm going to run you a quick demo of our Salesforce One quick action. So Diana Hawkins would come and click on the lower left corner, Vision. Open that up. And so with this quick action, you can take a picture. No, I don't know what's going on here. I'm going to reset this. All right, here we go. So after opening the quick action in Salesforce One in the lower left, um, you'll be able to upload the file, take a picture of the business card, which we have here. Try to get a good quality picture. Oh, let's retake that. So. take a picture here, and send it off to the API. So what it's doing now is it's scanning the image, grabbing all the text, and populating a form that we'll be using to create the lead. So it's done a pretty good job. And the point of this is to get you as far as possible without having to enter all the information manually. So we'll go through, and we'll see that the phone number wasn't picked up. As you see below is all the information that's been grabbed uh, from the business card itself. So phone number hasn't been picked up. We can go down there, look at the card, see it begins with 818-234-5151. Select those fields. And now it's populated in the form field. The email is slightly off. There might have been a smudge on the card, or I was holding it because it was shaking a little bit. And we'll ed edit it a little bit. Ensure the information is correct. We'll go ahead and create the lead. 
So as you see, there, there was a Gmail notification, which we're simulating Nolan's uh, email, but the lead's been created in Salesforce now quickly from just scanning the business card with all the information that we've grabbed from it. So if we go to Nolan's inbox, you'll see that he's got an email from Diana Hawkins saying, hi, Nolan. It's great meeting you at Dreamforce. Love to keep in touch. You can reach me at Diana at HawkinsAgency.com. <laughs> Here's my phone number. Looking forward to working together soon. So I know I went through that a little, a little quickly, but here's an overview of the quick action that we created. So open Salesforce One, take a picture of the business card, review the information, confirm it. Uh, the controller creates the lead and sends an email. And then the new lead's been created in Salesforce. So since we're using just Apex and Visual Force, uh, there's a lot of customizations you can do. You can add additional lead information to capture. You can rate the lead as a hot lead. Um, you can have different types of automated email responses depending on what event you're at. Um, and so the possibilities are endless. You can do whatever you usually do in Apex and Visual Force. So OCR on a higher level, which has been around for a long time, um, it basically just looks at the image and determines where there's differences in contrast and looks for things that resemble characters. And so it determines what words are by the groupings of those characters that's detected and the spaces between them. There's a lot of factors that can impact the accuracy of an OCR like we saw just now. The font size, the resolution of the image, um, and shapes that are similar on the image. Uh, two characters. So on the right side, you'll see an image of uh, a simulated view of what the API would read. Um, and so above Nolan's name is a door. The door handle resembles a circle, which could be a zero or an O. And it may uh, pick that up as a character. So there's a lot of OCR options out there. Uh, there's a lot of open source ones. So there's OCRED and Tesseract. Uh, OCRED is a simple, lightweight JavaScript library. Tesseract is a JavaScript version of the Tesseract open source OCR engine. Um, and it has support for 60 languages, can be trained. But there's a lot of options out there. Whether it's free or uh, you pay for it, it's really up to you to, to figure out the best one uh, for you to use. So let's take a look how easy it is to uh, include Tesseract, for example, in a Visual Force page that you can save as a quick action. So up at the top, you'll see that there's standard libraries that we're including, like jQuery. Um, and then it's just a matter of including the Tesseract JavaScript library. Uh, we'll create a new image object, object in JavaScript. We'll attach the URL of the image that we're taking a picture of and assign it to that image object. Uh, and the important thing here is to set the attribute for cross-origin on that newly created image object to blank so we won't have any interferences with uh, cross-origin issues when we're calling out to the API. And it's as simple as just passing that image object over. Um, from there, we'll see the text back, and we'll uh, populate it in an array with all the words that we've pulled. And then we'll do regular expressions to populate the form and determine what's a name, what's a phone number, and what's an email address. So regular expressions are just text strings that we use to describe a search pattern. Um, they're pretty standard, and you can do them in JavaScript. So for example, how we determine what a phone number is is we're looking for a chunk of digits, an email address. Uh, we're looking for an at symbol, but it has characters uh, before it and after it. So it's not to be confused with a Twitter handle or an Instagram handle. And then for a name, we're looking for a block of pure characters, so no numbers, no letters. And so those, those are just example regular expressions that you can use. There's a lot of tools that we'll go into at the end uh, that'll help you build those things. So like I said, when you click that button uh, and it sends off the image to the API, it gets the response. We're iterating through the array that we've populated uh, with all the words that we've pulled from the business card. And we're performing our regular expression tests. So we'll go into that in a little bit more detail. So for the name, we're first checking if that field on the form has been populated yet, and it hasn't, so it passes that test. We're looking to see if the word that we're grabbing uh, is greater than one character. Usually names are most likely to be more than one character. 
And then we're testing against the name regex to see if it has uh, all characters in that block of text. The interesting thing to note here is that we're also looking forward to the next word in the array, which we're hoping is the last name. So if it passes the name test for this current word and the next word, then we can guess that it's the first name and the last name. For the phone number and the email, it's a little bit more straightforward. Uh, we're checking to see if the field's been populated already. We're checking to see if the word contains uh, greater than or equal to 10 characters, uh, which is a typical format for a phone number here in the States, and testing against our phone regex. And then for the email address, like I alluded to earlier, we're looking for an at symbol, but also looking for characters before the at symbol and after with a dot and then more characters following it. So that was a pretty simple example of gathering data automatically. Uh, an important item to consider about AI and machine learning, that was just OCR. But an important thing to consider about AI and machine learning is that the data that you provide it determines the quality of the conclusions and insights that, you, that AI can make. Um, so this was just a quick way to get information accurately into Salesforce. Um, in our example, it's very quick to capture the image and ensure that you have the quality information in the org to start off with. And so with Einstein, it's going to change the way that we think about including intelligence and vision services in our apps and visual force. Um, if you're interested in learning more about Einstein's predictive vision services, I would recommend you check out the Einstein Park or the Einstein Discovery uh, Zone upstairs. And they'll be able to show you some of the MetaMind predictive vision services that are used in image classification. So that pretty much wraps up our session. Um, here's some resources that we used for our demo, uh, demo build. The email is being sent through Apex single email message. We're using TestRack for OCR, but again, you can use whatever you want. Um, and then the main thing you should check out is the Einstein Predictive Vision Pilot, uh, which will walk you through an image classification demo. And you can see that over in Einstein Parker upstairs. <laughs>